Stuka Joe here. We will continue our playthrough of the great game. This is the 1840 turn, uh, turn two of six. And we begin the turn by introducing uh, as reinforcements leaders that come into play in this turn. See that the British receive four Keen, Abbott, Connolly, and Shakespeare, and the Russians receive Berovsky. And these reinforcements can be placed in any space under their respective imperial power control. So Keene goes to Bombay, where the British have two strength points. Abbott to Baluchi, where they have one. Connolly joins Pottinger and his uh, seven British strength points in Kandahar. And Shakespeare goes to Delhi where the British have Flashman and eight strength points. Berovsky appears in Orenburg where the Russians have four strength points. We shuffle the deck and hand each of the sides seven cards. Let's take a look at the cards starting with the British hand. The British have a campaign card, gunboat diplomacy, a hero card with the caveat that uh, for purposes of this replay only, it will have a value of three as we have stated before. A military surveyor's card. This is a Russian high Asia card, not very useful for the British. Imperial commitments, pen mightier than sword, and one emissary card. So the British can discard up to two cards and they will discard military surveyors. And in its place they will draw a card from the draw pile. And it's Martini Henry Rifles and Krupp Guns. This is a card that the text cannot be played in this turn, only in the 1870s, but it's still a, a three-value card. You can do three actions with this card. And uh, Gunboat Diplomacy will be helpful to move uh, strength points into Persia. And the British are sorry they didn't draw any Persian Persuasion card. Uh, that's the card that allows a side to uh, change Persia's uh, status to neutral just by occupying two spaces in Persia. So, British don't have that commodity for this turn. The Russians have two gunboat diplomacy cards. The Crimean War card that allows the Russians and British to fight each other in combat for one round. The Pundit's card. This is a British High Asia card with not uh, much use for the Russians. Pen Mightier Than Sword. Persian Persuasion, which is the card we were talking about a while before. And one spoiler. Note that the two gunboat diplomacy cards will allow the Russians to bypass the dangerous Karakum Desert by moving uh, through the blue connection lines in the Caspian Sea. The pundit's card is useless for the Russians, so they will discard that one. And the Russians already control Persia, so they don't have to persuade Persia to go back to neutrality. So they will also discard the Persian persuasion card. So the Russians draw two cards from the draw pile. An emissary card and the Cossacks card. So it, these are excellent draws for the Russians. Now they have some diplomacy they can conduct this turn, and the Cossacks card is one of the two cards they need to be able to enter Kashgaria. So we begin this turn with round one. Each side selects a card and let's see what they are. A 
Russian selected gunboat diplomacy, the British Martini Henry rifles and Krupp guns. And both cards have values of three. So we have to roll a die to see who has the initiative. On an odd result, it will be the Russians. And on an even result, the British. The roll is a four, an even number. So the British play first their card and have the initiative. And as stated before, this card cannot be played for the event. It can only be played for the event in the 1870s. So it can be played by the British either for reinforcement or for three actions. And they play the card for reinforcement. So they add three strength points to Delhi. And now the British have 11 strength points there. And the Russians play gunboat diplomacy. So now they can actually move units along the blue lines over the Aral and Caspian Seas during this round only. The Russians have four strength points at Orenburg. They will move three of the strength points across desert terrain to Guriev. So they have to undergo the attrition check. The die roll is a seven minus one six. So uh, they have three strength points. They don't lose any to desert attrition. The next action is used to move those three strength points from Guriev to Baku. And from Baku, they move into Tehran. The attrition roll is 9 modified to an 11. So 11 strength points are safe. They have just three. So no losses from attrition for this force. And that's the end of round one. Now we move to round two. Each side selects a card. The Russians picked emissary, the British campaign card. So the Russians have the lower valued card and they go first. They have the initiative. And the Russians decide to play first the event. And the Russians transfer Perovsky, who's at Orenburg, to Tashkent in Kokand. His diplomacy rating of one is nothing to write home about. Let's see if the Brits want to play a spoiler. Well, the answer here is easy because the British simply don't have a spoiler. So we roll 1d6 and we add Perovsky's diplomatic rating of one, and the Russians need a final die roll of five or more. The roll is a 1 modified to a 2, so Perovsky fails, but he is not eliminated from the game because the uh, opponents, the British, did not counter with a spoiler card. So he remains in Kokan for now, and he may even give it another try in another round. Now the Russians play the action point of the emissary card to march the three Russian strength points at Tehran south to Isfahan. Now the attrition roll is an 8 modified to a 10, so the three strength points are safe. If the landing spaces in Persia are occupied, it is most likely the British will not be able to take them and uh, will not be able to fulfill any condition of the Persian persuasion card, which is taken two spaces and that would revert Persia back to neutrality. So the Russians want to occupy, especially that empty space of Karg Island. The British play their campaign card for action, so they have four actions. First action will be used to move two strength points of the 11 that are here in Delhi. to Bombay. And because two strength points moved, attrition losses are just impossible. So those two strength points join the other ones there in Bombay. And now the British have four strength points there. And this kind of move creates the impression on the Russians that the British may have a Persian persuasion card, and that will 
uh, divert some of the Russian and Persian forces to these uh, coastal areas. Of course, the British don't have the Persian persuasion card in their hand. The second action will see Flashman and Shakespeare march together with all nine strength points that are in Delhi to Lahore here in Punjab, where they will attempt to finish off the fortress there that has only six strength points. The British roll 1d6, the Punjabs roll three dice, so the British roll first. Roll is a five, which is reduced by Flashman's tactics rating of two, so it is a final die roll of three, and the British have nine strength points. Nine minus three is six, which is exactly the strength that the fortress had left. So the fortress is destroyed, and Punjab now becomes a discontented British vassal. So we place control and discontent markers on each of Punjab's spaces. So two actions have been expended. There's two more available. So the next action will be that Flashman will leave three strength points in Lahore and with the remaining six, he will march to Peshawar. And from Peshawar, he marches into Kabul. And that spends the last action. But now we have combat there. And the Afghans also collapse. They don't have any more forces. The only forces they had were at Ghazni. And their capital, Kabul, has been conquered. So we place British markers on all Afghan spaces, as well as discontent markers. And as a bonus, the fort at Ghazni is reduced, meaning that it is destroyed. Now we roll for possible attrition of Flashman's strength points. The roll is an 8 modified to a 10. 10 strength points are safe. Flashman has six, so they're all safe. And as we can see here, all the entry points to the British Raj are sealed with vassal states that are under their control. We see here Baluchistan protecting the uh, path to Bombay as well as to Delhi. And we also see Punjab, which protects access to Leh, Simla, and Delhi as well. The disadvantage for the British is, is that all these three vassal states, including uh, Afghanistan, have been conquered, so they're all uh, in discontent status. That means they are susceptible to rebellion if the Russians play a rebellion card. And now to round three. So each side selects a card and let's see what they are. The Russians play Cossacks and the British Imperial Commitments and both cards have the same value so we roll 1d6. Even result, the British will go first, odd result, the Russians. The roll is a 1 so the Russians will go first. And this is one of the Russian High Asia cards. The play of two of these cards allows the Russians to access the vassal state of Kashgaria. But the Russians will play this card first for its two actions. The first action will be used to move two of the three strength points that are here in Isfahan through the desert terrain here to Karg Island. And the attrition die roll of 5, minus 1, 4 allows safe passage of both strength points to their destination. And now those two strength points would roll for normal attrition, which is uh, 2d6 plus 2, but it's just impossible that two 
uh, strength points will be reduced by any die roll combination. So we won't even roll. In Khorasan, the Russians have Simonich, two Russian strength points, and 12 Persian strength points. So the Russians organize a stack composed of eight Persian strength points, two Russian strength points, and Simonich, and they will march on Herat. And they will try to finish off the fortress there. Herat is a vassal state with just one space. Herat is three spaces away from the British Raj. And the British have a hero card they can play now in order to send one of their officers to the space where the combat is taking place, that is Herat. So the British transfer Pottinger, who is currently in Kandahar, Afghanistan, and he will try to be the hero of the day in the battle for Herat. So who rolls first now? The Russians have a force composed of eight Persian strength points, but they have two Russian imperial strength points, so they roll one die. The Heratis have uh, nine strength points of Heratis led by an imperial officer, so they roll two dice. Because the Russians roll less dice, they roll first, and we will subtract then the losses from the Herati side, and then it'll be their turn to fire back. So the Russians roll a four. We subtract one for Simonich's tactics value, so it is a final three. Ten strength points minus three cause seven points of damage on the Herati fortress. Now, the fort has taken 13 points of damage. It has two strength points left. The Heratis roll a four, and we reduce that four uh, with a minus three for Pottinger's tactics rating. So the final die roll is a one. And uh, the Heratis only had two strength points, so two minus one is a loss of one on the Russo-Persian force. And, of course, the Persians will absorb that loss also. So the mixed Russian and Persian force is repelled. It doesn't take the fortress, which still holds, and it has to march back to Khorasan. And the attrition die roll is a disastrous two, which is modified to four. And... Uh, the mixed force has a total of nine strength points. Nine minus four is five strength points lost. Yes, and you guessed it, all five strength points to be lost will be absorbed by the Persians. So what once was a stack of ten strength points limps back into Khorasan with only four, two Russian and two Persian strength points. Having completed its two actions, now the card is played for its event and it is placed in the Russian High Asia panel. So the Russians need to play one more card, military surveyors, and they will be able to enter Kashgaria. And Kashgaria, of course, because it has four spaces, can provide four victory points. Now it is British round three and they play Imperial Commitments and they will play it for the event first. So that means that the Russians have to transfer half fractions rounded up of all Russian Imperial strength points which are outside of home country spaces back to their home country fortress. Let's see how many Imperial Russian strength points are actually outside of Russia. There's two strength points in Gyok Tepe, two in Khorasan, one at Isfahan, and two at Karg Island for a total of seven. So the Russians will transfer 
half rounded up, that's four, taking one from each one of these spaces and transferring these strength points to their home country base of Orenburg. And now there's five strength points there, and now they have to eliminate half of the strength points rounded up, so they eliminate three. And now only two strength points remain there. Having played the card for its event, now the British play the card for actions, and they have two. So the first of two actions will be to march Flashman's column, currently at Kabul, to Termes in Bokhara. This constitutes an invasion of Bokhara. Uh, the attrition die roll causes no losses on the British column. And the last action of the British is to take four of the seven strength points in Kandahar and march them to Herat to join Pottinger and try to finish off the fortress there. The fortress has 13 points of damage, so it only has a strength of 2, and the British roll first, 1d6. The roll is a 1, and we subtract Pottinger's tactics rating of 3, so the final die result is minus 2. 4 strength points minus minus 2 is the same as 4 plus 2, inflicts 6 damage points on Herat, which only has a strength of 2, so Herat falls to the British and now we place control marker and a discontent marker there and another vassal state has fallen to British conquest now we proceed to round four each side selects a card the Russians play gunboat diplomacy the British emissary so the lower valued emissary card will be played first by the British and the British will first play the text of the emissary card. The British notice that they have a marked advantage in the number of leaders they have on the board. They have five and the Russians two. So they can risk one in one of these uh, emissary card plays. And the British will send Shakespeare, who is currently with Flashman's column at Termes in Bocara, to Tehran to try to convince the Persians to revert to neutral status. Unfortunately for the British, the Russians have a spoiler card and they will play it now. And Perovsky, who is currently in Kokand, is transferred to Tehran where his diplomacy score will be three instead of the whopping one that he normally carries around. So the uh, unfortunate Shakespeare has to roll a final die roll of five. We add two for his diplomacy rating but subtract three for Perovsky's enhanced diplomatic value so it's a net minus one. The roll is a five modified to a four. So this uh, diplomatic attempt by Shakespeare fails and nothing else is ever heard of him. Now the British play the emissary card for its sole action. And the British march Abbott and his uh, strength point from Baluchi across desert terrain to Bampur, Persia. So the British have control of one Persian space. The Persian army uh, is not set up because it is already uh, deployed on the map and if the British control a second Persian space and play the Persian persuasion card the Persians will revert to neutrality. Now we would normally roll for the attrition and regular uh, attrition check but because the force consists of just one string point it is impossible to roll less than that so we'll forego rolling any attrition dice. On to Russian round number four. They play gunboat diplomacy, but for reinforcements. So the Russians receive three strength points at Orenburg, increasing their strength there to five. Now we move on to the last round of this turn, round five. 
Each side selects a card. The Russians play the Crimean War card and the British gunboat diplomacy. So the Russians have the initiative and will play their card first. If played for the event, this card allows the Russians to attack British strength points during one round. And then if that happens, the card is permanently removed from play. But the Russians feel they don't have enough strength to uh, push and uh, make a hole in the British lines. See, the British have substantial forces nearby in uh, Herat also Bokhara, as well as in Kandahar. So the British will play the card solely for its action value, two actions, and by not playing the event, the card is not permanently removed from the game. The first action is spent to move one strength point from Jeok Tepe to Merv in the Turkomans. And this move effectively prevents the British, who don't have the Crimea, another Crimean war card, there's just one of them, from entering any space where there's Imperial Russian forces. And we don't roll for attrition of any kind, desert or regular, because it's impossible to get a result which is less than one. The second action sees all six Russian strength points at Orenburg marching across the desert to Kazala and the Cossacks. Uh, Cossacks doesn't have a standing army, so they cannot resist. And now we have to roll for desert and regular attrition. The desert attrition roll is seven. We subtract one, six. So six strength points are safe. And that's what that uh, column is composed of, six strength points. So. There's none lost to desert attrition. Now we roll for regular attrition, 2d6 plus 2. A 6 modified to an 8, so the 6 Russian strength points are unaffected. And that's the end of Russian round number 5. Now the British play their gunboat diplomacy card for action. They have 3 actions and they can move, if they want to, uh, strength points. Uh, along the blue lines over the Persian Gulf during this round. So the British will march, uh, actually sail, Keane and his four strength points that are currently at Bombay. And they will use this blue connection line through the Arabian Sea and the Persian Gulf to reach Bushire in Persia and engage in combat with six Persian strength points there. The British roll one die and subtract Keane's tactics rating of two. The roll is a two modified to a zero, and because the British force is composed of four strength points, the Persians lose that number. The two remaining Persian strength points cannot inflict any damage on Keane's column because they would be rolling three dice and you can't roll less than two with three dice. So the Persians lose this combat and must retreat. And the Persians retreat to Karg Island where there's one strength point of Imperial Russian forces. The British still have two actions but they decide to stop Keane's column right there. The attrition roll of 10 modified to a 12 causes no losses on his column. And the British still have two actions left. And the last two actions are spent to move the three British strength points at Lahore, who march through Peshawar and reach Kabul. And an attrition die roll of 6 modified to an 8 causes no losses on this force. And that's the end of British round number five. Now to the end of decade phase. We roll 1d6 for each officer on the board. And on an odd result, the officer will be eliminated. And I will only show those that rolled odd die results. Perovsky is gone. 
and so is Pottinger, who actually betrayed Herat in the game, hero and then conqueror of Herat. Connolly departs as well. And so does Keane. All other officers on the map remain, including the Emir of Bokara, who's been there since the beginning of the game in turn one. And when we look at eliminated slash departed officers, the British have six and the Russians two. Let's take a look at the victory point situation. The Russians control their three home spaces, plus the four spaces in Turkomans, that's seven, and Kazala and the Kazakhs for a total of eight victory points. The British have their four spaces in the British Raj, plus four for the spaces in Punjab, plus three for Baluchistan, plus the three spaces of Afghanistan, Herat, and Termes in Bukhara for a total of 16 victory points. So the British have a marked advantage. However, they have lost many officers. The Russians will receive some officers, although mediocre in the next turn. And the British are pretty vulnerable in those vassal states that have discontent markers. They are susceptible to rebellion. So uh, the Russians can raise some hell in those states. So let's see what happens in the next turn, the 1850s. Turn number three in the great game. This is Stuka Joe, signing off for now. Thanks for watching.